It is Women's History Month, and I am super excited because we have a dynamic, a wonderful, stupendous, tremendous woman here with us today. We have Dr. Tanya Matthews. How are you today? I am well. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. So, you know, going through your bio, and I know this is just an excerpt of it, like <laughs> you have accomplished so much, you have done so much, and I would just definitely love, love, love to talk about some of the things that you have done. Is that okay? Sure. That would be wonderful. Yes. I'm so <laughs> excited. It's weird to be included in, you know, Women's History Month. You're like, whoo, okay, take a breath now. You gotta, you gotta be kidding me. Are you I, absolutely, absolutely not. I mean, you know, because even in your world, you know, we do what we do and then you get right. stopped on the street and someone tells you that their voice is the reason you get through the afternoon and you're just like, oh my goodness, thank that, you. Right. So yeah, you're it means right. it means a lot. <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Well, look, I want to go ahead and talk about your background as a poet and an engineer. Um, mm -hmm. You are a nonprofit executive, a leadership veteran. You currently are the chief executive officer of the International African American Museum, which is located in Charleston. Um, mm -hmm. You also serve as the uh, associate provost for inclusion workforce development and director of the STEM Innovation Learning Center for Wayne State University. And then prior to that, you were the president and CEO of Michigan Science Center. We go on that you found that STEMista, did I say that correctly? STEMista, yes. STEMista, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, that's basically a project of movement to engage girls in the future with STEM careers and tools. And then you have STEMista Rising, which is supporting professional women in STEM. And that's inclusion emphasis of women of color. Uh, yes. You go on. I mean, you just have an amazing dedication to the community. Um, your accomplishments are widely recognized. You were noted as one of the most influential women in Michigan. You were also honored as a trailblazer for Career Master Magazine. You're a member of the National Academy of Science Board and Science Education and was appointed both by Democratic and Republican administrations to the National Assessment Governing Board. Uh, man, I can go on. You, uh, you're a published poet. You were included in the 100 Best African American Poems, and this mm. was edited by Nikki Giovanni. Like, what an honor. And wait a minute, yes. didn't even get to your education yet. <laughs> so, you know, you have your PhD in biomedical engineering from John Hopkins University. You have your BSc in biomedical and electrical engineering from Duke University alongside a certificate in African American studies. You are a member of Delta Sigma Theta in uh, Sorority Incorporated, and uh, you are a native Washington, D.C. What is that? A yes. Washingtonian? Washingtonian, yes. Washingtonian. Okay. <laughs> so, welcome, welcome, welcome. And so, thank the first you. Thing you are more than welcome. The first thing that I want to say is that I think it's amazing that you have a love for arts and science. And I know that there's some people that might have said to you, you have to pick one or the other. But you mm -hmm. forged forward and you, you know what I'm saying, you wanted to express both of them and do both of them. So tell me a little bit yes. about that. You know, even I was one of the folks that said, listen, sis, you got to pick one, you know, or or the other. And I tried, right? You know, particularly when I was in college, I was like, you know, maybe I need, I need to focus. Engineering is hard. Let me put this writing stuff to the side. And I found out actually that when I did, I was less focused uh, mm -hmm. in engineering and I just wasn't doing as well. And I said, oh, maybe, maybe you are just supposed to be a poet and a writer. Fine. So I started kind of slacking off a little bit on the, you know, the math and science part and believe it or not, that then affected my creative side on, on the poetry. So I think, you know, they're, they're all very linked. I mean, we like to say that folks in science are creative problem solvers. So maybe that's where that comes in, you know, mm -hmm. and there is, there is some storytelling and, and truth telling and digging digging in when you're into the poetry and the art and the writing. And I think that, you know, scientists learn how to ask good questions. And then I think that may be spilling over um, into the, the poetry side, but it definitely, I think, makes for a, a fuller, a fuller life. And I think about things and problems and issues very differently. Sometimes, you know, my, my, my home teams on the left or the right got to get used to it. Okay, that's a little too much poetry there, Dr. Matthews. Like, can you, you know, stop? Enough with the spreadsheets, Dr. Matthews. Can you stop? <laughs> so, you know, see, so you, you have both of those things. But I was, I was blessed with, uh, with a family, um, you know, that believed in possibilities and mm -hmm. kind of had the philosophy, oh, she'll figure it out eventually. Uh, and so in the end of the day, you know, I, I was able to keep both of those things in my life. 
Yes, you're definitely using the full capacity of your left and your right brain for sure. That's right. Yes. <laughs> so how did you end up in South Carolina? So I ended up in South Carolina. Uh, this museum brought me here. The okay. International African American Museum. I mean, first of all, it, it is named well, right? It's named like, oh, okay. What, what, yeah. What's that about? Uh, and so, but actually, um, one of my uh, longtime mentors had been one of the original consulting historians about 20 years ago. So I had remembered hearing about it when I was just getting into museums. Uh, uh -huh. And then when I got the call, I was like, are you, are you kidding? Like like me, like I, I could I could come and be a part of of that. Uh, and so then I learned, you know, what we were really trying to do and that we were still building it and in construction. Uh, and so that was that was an amazing um, opportunity uh, for me. And so that's what that's what brought me down here uh, in this direction. Mm hmm. Well, that is amazing. So please tell me, I know I want you to give me the exact date of yes. when it's actually supposed to open and just tell me a little bit of what people can expect when they come and visit the International African American Museum. Yeah, so I would say that you and the world is as interested in the exact date it's opening as I am. <laughs> so <laughs> right now, we are, we are working to get uh, the museum open in 2022. So our target right now is late 2022. But of okay. course, you know, anyone who's ever even built just a house, you know, all of these dates are moving targets and deadlines. And if it's not the supply chain, it's the price of gas, it's this, that, and the other thing. So we are working uh, towards that, but we've already started doing our programming. So for like last month, we had all of these genealogy workshops because we've got the Center for Family History that helps people wow. trace their ancestry that folks are yeah. so excited about. Yeah. Um, we'll be celebrating, of course, Juneteenth. Uh, and this summer is the 200th anniversary of uh, Denmark Vesey's um, uh, sort of a planned rebellion uh, in this space. And so we'll be celebrating and commemorating that. Uh, and we also started the Gullah Geechee storyline uh, with the Charleston County uh, Public Library. So okay. folks can call up there and listen to um, a story, no, no charge, anything like that. Just just call on there. We have a, a griot storyteller uh, that's telling some, some oh, nice. tales on the line. So there, there are lots of things that we're already doing. Oh, that is amazing. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, as people can look on the screen, they can actually see the website. And I know you guys yeah. have all the information listed on the website as well. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, so I know that are you guys basically um, through your website, are you accepting like memberships all, right now or? We definitely are. We are accepting members and we're still in a special season for charter members. Now, so charter okay. members is a, is a lifetime designation. Of course, when we open, oh, wow. we'll have our annual membership and everyone, including charter members, will be invited to renew their commitment year after year after year. But there is only one shot to be a charter member. And that's actually before we open. So our charter members is the special designation to folks who uh, who stood up and, and raised their hand to support the museum even before we got our doors open. Uh, and actually the charter member um, uh, initiation fees for lack of a better term, uh, start as low as $25 because we oh, wanted everyone, um, students, young folks uh, to be able to get in there. And then of course, you know, if you wanna add a couple zeros on, you know, sister appreciates you. <laughs> so, so it goes it goes all the way, the way up uh, in, in in different levels and, and ways people can support us or even actually a uh, step up and become a donor as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, that sounds fantastic. So if you could tell me, some people are wondering, well, look, you know, there's other African-American museums mm -hmm. out there. What is so unique about this one that's opening up in Charleston? Tell me what is so, mm -hmm. special, so unique about it. So there are a couple of things. One, you know, when we open, we, we are big between our interior and our garden spaces outside. We will become the second largest in the country. So here, here, low country. Let's, okay. let's work it out. So we, we will have that designation. Uh, we are a national and international museum. So of course, we're telling the full story. But every once in a while, we also throw on a very special 
Carolina Lens. Uh, so we will have the Gullah Geechee Gallery, right? And so, of course, every African American museum in the world should be talking about the Gullah people. But of course, this is the epicenter. And so we're going to have an entire gallery that's more of a living history gallery talking about past and present stories of the Gullah and the Geechee people. So that's going to be a very big special thing for us. And then the last that I kind of already mentioned is the Center for Family History. We're building a genealogy center into the museum. We're going to have research assistants and genealogists in there to help folks with their family tree uh, and to get some, some stories behind those names you've been pulling, up, chasing those yeah. leads off all these websites. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Absolutely. And, then, you know, and I definitely will be one to sign up for that, you know, just curious <laughs> yes. myself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Even for me, I just uh, discovered that my my grandmother's grandfather lived to be 106 years old. Wow. So when you find out things like that, you're just like, oh, my gosh, like, can I can I get a story along with those dates and those names? So it's it's really an amazing experience. Absolutely. You know, I mean, that that is absolutely amazing. So mm -hmm. is there anything else that you wanted to share with us that we didn't discuss as far as the International African American Museum is concerned? Yeah, I would just say go to go to the website, tool around, play around, get ready, uh, get yourself ready, your kids ready, your family reunion ready. One of the things we're really excited about is we've committed to fitting, figuring out how to fund all school trips into the museum. So we, we are working on free admission uh, for school uh, students on their field trips uh, yeah. so that we can actually help and be a supporter. My mother is a teacher. She's a lifelong educator. And so, you know, if, if I don't do things like this, I get a little email. <laughs> And I'm sure. And a note. So, so we, we, we have we have our teachers uh, covered and we're working on that as well. So that is so amazing. So, you know, if you could share with us something that keeps you inspired, something that keeps you motivated. Do you have like a personal quote or, you know, just kind of words you live by that you can share with us for Women's History Month? So it's interesting when I was preparing for that, you know, sometimes you write things down like a long time ago and then they come back. You're like, oh, yeah, I need that. So a while ago, I wrote this haiku. Y'all remember haiku? All right. So we got the haiku and it said it wasn't slavery that stopped us from flying. It was amnesia. Mm -hmm. And now I'm working at a history museum, getting folks to remember. And so what yes. I would say is that our past, you know, is part of, of our present. And if we feel like we're being held back or, or can't do something, you know, the stories of our past, be they recent, be it your mama's story, your great, 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 great grandmama's story, that's actually pushing us forward, not, not pulling us back. And so that has become my, my new mantra of late, mm -hmm. uh, to remember that my past is actually pushing me forward. Absolutely. That's so good. That's so good. You know what I mean? I feel like I feel like dropping this mic right here. <laughs> Dr. Matthews, I thank you so much. And this is one of the reasons why we wanted to go ahead and honor you here at Hot 1039939 for Women's History Month because you are doing some dynamic things, you know, within the community of Charleston, but it's going to benefit not just the state of South Carolina, nationwide, worldwide. And so we definitely had to honor you and uh, you know, as well as our sponsor, Mazda of Columbia as well. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.